Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in again. Uh, it's uh, end of September almost, and it's finally starting to cool down here in, in the countryside in Japan. And it just finished raining, so I figured I'd go ahead and start exploring the different streets throughout my neighborhood. If this is your first time tuning in, this is uh, we live in the countryside in uh, the Yamaguchi Prefecture. And we renovated this house right here so if you're interested please uh go back and watch some of those videos the fall is coming so there's a bunch of different flowers blooming here in my backyard there's a bunch of um i think they're called uh, dragon lilies and uh really really pretty so it's a really nice pretty river and actually there's lots of rivers around here uh but it just finished raining so uh the water is a little bit stronger than usual and this is the first time I'm walking around this area. So let's go ahead and uh, explore this way. Looks like there's a little bus stop right there. Yeah, so we even have a uh, Miwa taxi service right here. This is literally just around the house as well. Uh, these folks have a really nice big house right by the river. Oh, and looks like they also have some buses in there because there's a bus station uh, right down the street. So it looks like they uh, keep some of the buses in here too. I like these two houses, uh, two small, flat, side-by-side -side houses. Folks, it doesn't get any better than this. Again, if you're looking for a reason to, oh wow, wow, look at those big uh, birds. I'm not quite sure what they are. They just flew out of the out of the rice fields. Yeah, but like I was saying, if you're looking for a reason to move to rural Japan and just want to need to change or improve your life, just kind of need a change in life and a little bit slower pace, get away from the rent race, wherever you're at in the world. It could be in the, it could be in the United States. It could be in Tokyo. It could be in Osaka. A lot of uh, uh, subscribers are from. Uh, uh, Australia but uh yeah this is it right here folks and again the uh, the topic of uh, moving to rural Japan is becoming quite popular uh, more and more foreigners are doing it and the reason why is because foreigners can indeed purchase uh, land in Japan to include a house however it does not lead to residency right so that's something you have to keep in mind but if you again, if you're looking for a change or something different, here you go. Look at this, and we're just getting started. Yeah, it looks like they just did a nice, good trimming uh, along the rice fields right there. They have an electric fence. Uh, there are a lot of animals around here that they have to contend with: uh, boar hogs, monkeys. Uh, you name it, all kinds of different animals that, you know, obviously they have to uh, contend with, you know, trying to raise their crops. But we're going to go ahead and keep on walking straight this way. <laughs> that is, well, it's not a funny topic because it's a very serious topic, but that's an interesting cartoon, uh, cartoon character right there tell you to uh, don't drink and drive. I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and just walk a little bit more up that way and and uh, maybe we can come across a couple of vacant houses, uh, abandoned houses, which is a big problem here in Japan. So supposedly, there's different numbers out there, but supposedly throughout Japan, there's 8 to 10 million vacant houses, also uh, known as uh, an akiya. They're not necessarily abandoned. They may be uh, rightful owners and whatnot. They just probably had just moved on. Uh, the parents lived there like in our case the the parents passed away and the son was in Tokyo And so they just sold their family house and we were very fortunate to buy it All right, and while I'm at it. Let me go ahead and just kind of give you a quick little um, uh, How we found our IKEA so basically we found our house IKEA uh, Which was again, it was vacant for about five years and I just found it on a regular website and I did a quick video of that before, but um, you can use Chrome or any of the other web browsers that does the translation for you. Just type in the city or the area, the prefecture that you're looking at, and it does a pretty good job at translating the website for you. 
if you buy an IKEA or buy a house period through a website, through a real estate agent, you're going to have less problems than if you get do it through an IKEA bank. The IKEA bank, you know, um, there's uh, mainly it's, it's like a database that is kind of sort of ran by the city. However, a lot of these banks are not very well uh, maintained, ran. Uh, seems like they use uh, old 1980s uh, cameras to take pictures. And I guess because there's not much of an incentive to sell these properties. Uh, it's not like they're going to make a huge commission off them because many of them, they, they advertise to be free. I mean, there may be some truth to that, but at the end of the day, nothing is free. If you do happen to find one where you just kind of transfer the title over to you, I'm pretty sure you still have some fees such as um, past due taxes and stuff like that. But anyway, so that's how we found our place. And then after that, we found a carpenter and then we did an extensive renovation. So as you can see, there's actually quite a bit of activity in this little uh, countryside road, even though we're in the countryside. And I take it as a positive, right? Because um, many of these rural areas can be quite rural. And so you have to consider how are you going to be able to get in and out? Because that's another thing in Japan. Uh, you still, I believe you have to have a residency in order to get a driver's license. I'm in a different situation because we're SOFA status. And I'll talk about that in a different video. But real quick, SOFA status means a status of forces agreement. I am employed by the U.S. government. And that's how I am residing here at the time. So that's another nice modern house right here and it has a nice little uh, storage area. Uh, if you consider moving to Japan, uh, rural Japan, but you don't want to uh, suffer in an older house, this is an option right here. You could do something like that as well. I have these gorgeous uh, countryside houses right here and these beautiful rice fields. It is towards the end of September. So very soon here next month, I believe they're gonna start harvesting the, the rice and be really cool to watch. Really nice countryside houses up over there. Uh, it looks like most of them are probably occupied. So folks, let me go ahead and give you another tip on how to find a place, especially in rural Japan. Uh, really the best way is word of mouth and uh, as you noticed right over there there's this little business so last year uh, when we were kind of sort of just kind of looking around this area I couldn't find a whole lot other than the place that we end up buying online and uh, Choco and I we were actually we just finished looking at this house and we said well let's drive up the street and see what's there and uh, we saw this little cafe and we pulled over and uh, we just went in there and we started drinking some coffee and then we started talking to this really nice lady the owner and of course she was curious and what are you guys doing here in town because you know i'm a foreigner uh, so we, we explained to her that we're looking for a house and so she's like well i know a guy that knows a guy that knows a guy and she called but the person wasn't answering so what she did is like well let me just go and take you over there to where he's at right now because it was Saturday morning and they were like in this little, uh, set, uh, the, like the farmer's market. So she literally jumped in her car and drove maybe like, maybe an eight minute drive from here and took us over there, introduced us to the gentleman. And that gentleman, he was kind of like a volunteer for the Akia Bank here in Miwa. And then he took us over and showed us this house that was actually in the Akia Bank. So that's literally how it happened. We did not know her. You just put the word out. And then, after that, we went to another cafe that we know that's here in town, and same thing. And the lady was like, well, what are y'all doing? She was like, well, we're kind of looking for a house. Like, well, I know a carpenter. And then she end up, ended up introducing us to Kayak-san, our carpenter that renovated our house. All right, so I have no idea where this is gonna lead to, but let's go ahead and walk up this way and eventually start making it uh, back. Oh, and just talking about the Ganneguri, so the, you just saw the Ganneguri lab right there. So this is what these the chestnuts look like here in, in uh, Miwa. They're very famous. Yeah, so we came down from that direction. Let me go ahead and go to the right up this hill and uh, explore different areas.
Now check out this beautiful uh, house right here. So the one on the right, the one with the metal roofing, that's actually attached housing. Um, so it has like the straw underneath. But what happens is that one, the skill to uh, redo that is a dying skill and also very expensive. So unfortunately, what they do is they cover it up with, but there's a slightly newer house next to it. That house, the one on the left, that actually looks very similar to my house. It's probably a mid 1970s or maybe even a little earlier, but yeah, that's gorgeous right there. And uh, quite frankly, I think it's vacant. It looks like all, you know, got the little, little storage shed right there, the newer house, the older house. And then over there in the back, there's something else, but uh, yeah, it may be vacant. Wow, look at that. So the sun is starting to come out, but it's in the afternoon. So the reflection of the, the sun up against the trees and then the, the clouds and the mist, the fog, Wow, really pretty. Oh, I really like this place right here. It looks like they have it very well taken care of. A lot of beautiful flowers. Oh, wow. This is an example of a really nicely done older house as well. And then over there, that white building over there is called a Kura. It's basically like a storage where they used to store the grains and the valuables and stuff like that but wow look at that it's a really nice house <laughs> that's a really cool house we're up a little bit higher look at this really nice right down the, around the corners where that other house was at yeah a really beautiful neighborhood So this building right here looks like it's the little community center and uh, every village, every actually, well really the villages and maybe the smaller cities, they always have a like, like a community center. You get together and discuss different things that need to be done around your neighborhood, around your community, you pay some fees. And actually, interesting enough is that tomorrow we are attending our first meeting ever. Ooh, excited. <laughs> So, <laughs> maybe a little bit nervous, my, like my first day of school. If you're not really into that, uh, you know, you need to consider it because it's something that you are required to do. Well, not by law, but it's more of a uh, uh, kind of a social obligation, I guess. It looks like we're coming up to the school. I think that's a elementary school right there, yeah. The Miwa Elementary School. One of the problems in rural Japan is the, the declining population in several of the schools around this area. And many other areas have closed because of the decline in population. So the government of Japan is trying to attract younger families to come over to live in the rural, rural side. But of course it's difficult because of lack of jobs and whatnot. But hopefully that changes so folks in a way this is kind of my way <laughs> as a foreigner is to uh you know, do my part to uh, go ahead and spread the word and and show you that it's uh very much doable <laughs> right next to the school uh gardens lots of gardens all over the place here and even now here in the middle of nowhere are these teeny little shrines. I already passed by several shrines and temples. Uh, you probably saw them in the background, but I did not point them out. But <laughs> yeah, good call. I could use a restroom. It's kind of a rundown little shrine, but people still come here and they'll, they still kind of maintain it, keep it clean and uh, pay their respects. Yeah, so we just came from this direction and uh, I'm going to go ahead and go left. We just want to show this, this beautiful view from here. 
as we walk down this way towards the house. Huh. Again, nice little modern, simple white house right here. I mean, obviously I prefer an older house with character of the beams and the old Japanese style, which is the, you know, the way we chose to do our house, but there's nothing wrong with that. Especially as you grow older, you wanna think about the, the conveniences of being in a modern, warmer, uh, more convenient house. But uh, if you have not seen the renovation that we did on our house, we've tried to focus on uh, more conveniences, especially as we grow older, such as like sliding doors and all flat and the, the most of the living downstairs, just upstairs, we have a, a big craft room for Choco, my wife. But obviously that is not absolutely necessary as we grow older. Yeah, this beautiful river is uh, just a few hundred meters from my house. And uh, there's some, a uh, little bit down that way, there were some uh, koi fish, some carp. So right over there in the corner right there, there's a uh, new little cafe that's opening. It looks like it's kind of American style theme and it uh, looks like it's been closed for a while. So I'm happy to see that, you know, I like to see businesses uh, starting to thrive again. But also I've always noticed this big house right here. This is a huge house, uh, several attachments and, uh, and I'm pretty sure it's vacant because I've never seen any connectivity here. And it looks like once upon a time, it was some sort of business right there because you have all these shutters in front of it. If you're looking for some sort of business to start up, <laughs> this would be something like it. Uh, and the Miwa is definitely not very touristy, but there are a lot of little to local tourists. And actually right around here, you're going to see some uh, rental boats. So there's the Yasaka Dam around us. I wonder if this had anything to do with it. But as you can see, it's uh, roped off. Quite a shame, but over here you have the rental boats, so uh, you can. Uh, I don't think they're in business anymore, or maybe they're going to open up as part of this right here. Because you see right there, the TRCP rental boat. Uh, but as I drive to work, I see these folks over here uh, uh, preparing this cafe, Blue River Cafe. <laughs> Very fitting because there's the river right next to us, so. Uh, and it kind of looks like it has a little American theme. So yeah, folks, <laughs> looking forward to that. And if you happen to be around Miwa, then stop by and check them out. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, provide some support. We like to we like to support our local businesses. There you go, Blue River Cafe. All right, folks, I think we're getting close to the house here soon. Uh, so thanks for coming along. If you made it this far, uh, if, you, if you would like to continue seeing more rural living, as a foreigner here in Japan, uh, please hit uh, subscribe, like, share, and uh, yeah, go, go ahead and uh, please tune in. If you got any questions or if you got any special requests, if you'd like for me to cover, uh, feel free to do that. I kind of take pride in trying to answer all messages. Again, yeah, please go ahead and make a comment and uh, let's go ahead and explore together. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.